Hey Guitar Geeks, Guitar Guts back with a video about string tension and electric guitars. A lot of things factor into the playability of any uh, particular guitar, and one thing that has a great influence on that is the tension of the strings themselves. As a general rule, uh, lighter gauge strings are easier to play than heavier gauge strings. And you can get guitar strings in many, many different gauges, ranging from super light uh, to really, really thick, heavy strings. Uh, some of the most common, this is a set of 9 gauge strings that run from uh, a 9 on the high E to a 42 on the uh, 6 string. And they're generally considered fairly easy to play. You can get strings that are lighter than this. I think Yngwie Malmsteen and a few people used to play sets of 8 gauge strings. I don't have any of those because that's a little too light for me. But you can go down uh, even lighter than these. These are considered to be some of the easiest playing strings out there and very common on beginner guitars, uh, nine gauge strings. You can go up to uh, a very heavy set, like a set of 11s that run from 11 to 49, and they'd be a little bit harder to play than the nine gauge strings would be. If you can imagine pulling a very thin thread tight and then trying to do the same thing with a very thick rope, you would have to apply a lot more force to the thick rope to get it to pull as tight as the thin thread. And that's what's happening here. The heavier the gauge is, the more tension it takes to pull that string tight across the fretboard, and that makes the string a little bit harder to play, a little bit harder to bend, a little bit harder to press down toward the fretboard. Now, you can get strings in many different sizes in between. Uh, this is a set of regular 10s that run from 10 to 46 and they would be somewhere in between the 9s and the 11s. Um, and those are some of my favorite gauges there. You can also get uh, something in between the 10s and the 11s. This is a set of 11.5 uh, nickel wound XLs, and they run from 10.5 to 48. So they would have a little bit more tension than the regular set of 10s, but not quite as much tension as the set of 11s. So if you're playing tens and you want to step it up and you find 11 gauge a little bit too rough to play, you can always go with the in-between sizes. There's also an in-between size that fits right between the nines and the tens, and that's this set of 9.5s. Um, the 9.5s are a little bit thicker uh, than the regular nines, but not as thick as the 10 gauge strings. And this is one of my favorite sets of all time. It's just a great all-round string. It's not quite as slinky and uh, noodly as the 9-gauge, and it's not quite as thick and stiff as the 10-gauge, and I have this on probably more of my guitars than any other gauge, is the 9.544 EXL120 Pluses. Uh, they're a little bit harder to find than some of the other strings, but you can find them online. Uh, another thing that plays into um, the feel of certain strings is the material that they're made out of. Different brands have different formulas for making uh, their wound nickel strings. These happen to be pure nickel strings. And the composition of the strings themselves and different manufacturing methods might add a little bit more elasticity or a little bit less elasticity to the strings. And so can uh, certain coatings like the ones on these Diodario strings. Uh, it can affect, affect the playability to, to a small extent. Maybe not as much as string gauge, but the the materials, elasticity, and any coatings that might be on the string, or even how they're wound, can affect the feel of the string and make it a little less or a little bit more easy to bend on and a little bit more easy to play. Now, there are other factors that um, figure into the equation of how easy or hard it is to play on uh, certain strings, one of which is the break angle over the nut. If you look at an electric guitar, um, when the strings cross the nut at the top of the guitar, there's a certain angle that they'll take toward the tuners. And the same thing is true of the brake angle over the saddles at the other end of the guitar. They'll take a certain angle to get over the tuners and down toward the tailpiece. And this can make a difference because different tensions here at the tailpiece and the headstock uh, can affect the feel of the string as you play it. It's not that you're changing the tension of the string, it's still tuned to pitch, but the brake angle over that nut or the brake angle over the saddle can affect the feel 
of the string itself. If this tube was the nut on the guitar, and down here you have the string that you're playing on, as the string crosses the top of the nut and comes down toward the tuners, a steeper angle to that break will produce higher tension on the strings. Let me straighten my camera out a little bit here. Um, a steeper angle will increase the feel of tension on that string. A shallower angle will make it a little bit easier to play, but if you get too shallow of an angle, you can lose the contact between the string and the nut, and you can get a little bit of buzzing on your strings that's kind of hard to diagnose. Same thing goes for the other direction. If this is the string coming down the guitar now, and the cardboard tube is the saddle on the bridge, um, <clears throat> as the string leaves the saddle and heads off for a tailpiece or for the body of the guitar down this way, um, it can have a greater or lesser break over that saddle, and that also will increase or decrease the tension of the feel of tension on, on your string. If it's a shallower angle that it's heading down at, you'll have a little bit um, of an easier bending string or, or a, a lighter feeling string. And as you increase that angle over it, uh, it'll get a little stiffer to play. Now, the type of saddle that you have can also play into that. Um, the saddle on this Stratocaster guitar are the old vintage bent steel saddles and I find them just a little bit slinkier to play on than something like these more modern stamped versions that are very boxy. I think the squareness of them and the fact that the string is in contact with more of the metal on them makes the guitars that have these on them feel just a little bit stiffer um, than the ones with the bent steel saddles like the vintage fenders. I think they move they have just a little bit more movement to them they move around just a little bit more as you play and make the feeling of tension a little bit less now some uh, tail pieces on guitars you can vary the angle at which the string comes over the nut like on this Les Paul I'm sorry I said it wrong uh, the angle at which it comes over the saddle as the string comes down toward the saddles they can break and head down to the tail piece at a steep angle or a shallow angle and varying the height of this uh, tailpiece will allow you to adjust that. I had one clever viewer um, on the last video that I made that included something about the brake angle over the nut mentioned the fact that you could tilt this tailpiece um, to where one side was higher or lower than the other. So you could have lower tension on the high strings and then lower down the other end of the tailpiece to create greater tension on the heavier wound strings. If you wanted to have easier bending strings up here and tighter strings for chugging down here, you could do that and set the tailpiece just a little catty corner to itself and achieve that effect. Now, some tailpieces, like the one on this PRS, there's not much you can do about it. The strings simply wrap around the top of the bridge and head toward the back. There's no way to reverse top wrap this uh, tailpiece because it already is reverse top wrapped. And so um, the strings have to lay in a certain channel here and they have to be in contact with a lot of the bridge. Um, I don't find that that increases the string tension a lot, but there's no way to vary it if you don't like it. Um, another thing that affects the string tension on a guitar is the scale length. The actual length between the saddles at one end to the other end at the nut. Guitars vary as to the length of that scale. This Paul, this uh, Les Paul, has a scale length of 24 and three quarters, which is one of the shorter scale lengths out there. The Paul Reed Smith in the background there uh, has a scale length of 25, so it's a little bit longer than that. And a lot of Strats and this Ibanez RG has a scale length of 25 and a half from the nut down to the bridge saddles. And the longer that scale length, the greater the string tension. If you can imagine trying to pull a rope tied across two feet of space, that would be very different than trying to pull a rope tied across an entire river. Um, the greater the distance that you're trying to pull the string straight over, the harder it is to get that string to stay straight. And so guitars like Strats, guitars like uh, Ibanez, 
uh, will have a little bit of higher string tension naturally just because of that scale and guitars like SG's and Les Paul's will have a little lighter string tension simply because the scale length is shorter from one end to the other. Now there are other ways that you can adjust the feel of string tension on your guitar. Um, one thing that can affect it and really handicap you is if you have your strings set too high off the fretboard. If there's a lot of space between that sp the string and the fretboard, you're using a lot of energy to press that string down to the frets, and you're also increasing the string tension the farther you have to press that string down. So if you, ha if you have your string set really far up off the neck, that string's going to feel more difficult to play, more difficult to bend than if it were set down lower. Now there comes a point of diminishing returns when you get your strings down so low that they cause fret buzz, so you have to watch that. But there's really no reason, unless you're really playing hard and banging on those strings, there's really no reason to have your strings um, a, a terrible distance away from the fretboard. It's just going to increase the difficulty of playing. Now, if you've got the strings that you want on your guitar and you've picked out the guitar that you want uh, and you've got the tone uh, where you want it and it's still a little bit hard to play, there are some other things that you can do to make the string tension a little bit less on your guitar. And you can do that while tuning your guitar. If you've tuned your guitar and you find that it uh, is still really stiff playing, you can tune to a flat tuning on most tuners, including this one right here. And I don't know if you can see it on that one, but there's another one right here. And the middle button there will allow you to tune to a flat tuning, E flat, which means you're tuned down half a step and that lowers the tension on the strings the entire time you're playing on every string. So you can tune down to E flat and it makes your guitar feel a lot slinkier. Sometimes um, tuning to E flat will change the tone of the guitar. I know that if you're trying to set up a guitar to really nail the Stevie Ray Vaughan tone, you can put 11 gauge strings on, you can have the right pickups, but for some of his songs, until you tune down to E flat, you're really not nailing that tone. It really does change the sound of the pickups and the guitar itself when you tune down to E flat, which is what Stevie Ray Vaughan and Jimi Hendrix did quite a bit of the time. Now, if you don't, uh, if you do tune down to E flat and you don't like it, if it's too low of a tuning, if it changes the uh, pitch of the pickups too much, there's another little trick that you can use. If you look at the regular scale on a tuner, uh, the the middle uh, lighted position here is 440 tuning, which is standard pitch. You can tune to 430, which is another mark right here. That's not quite E flat. It's not tuned down that far, but it's 430 tuning. And a lot of times, if I've been playing guitar uh, for most of the day and my fingers get tired, I don't want to have the guitar tuned to E flat. I'll simply tune up to 430. Now, it's not going to light up correctly at the top, but you can see the line on the tuner, and you can get it as close as you can to the 430 tuning. And that'll lower the, ten the string tension just a little bit to where it's a little bit slinkier to play, but it doesn't change the tone quite as much as tuning down to E-flat. And that might give your fingers a little bit of a break if you've got uh, you know, a little bit of soreness or tiredness due to string tension. So there you've got it. Uh, those are some ways in which you can increase or decrease the string tension until you've a got a guitar that plays the way you want it to. If you've got any comments or ideas, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit the like button. We'll see you again later.